Welcome back to City Line. So as I said in the opening, nothing says the Christmas holidays to me, Amanda Westbrook, than Christmas Rebels. And that's what this segment is here to talk about. Please join me in welcoming the beautiful BJ Douglas. You are the stage director and artistic director for Christmas Rebels. BJ, thank you for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure, Amanda. You brought with you uh, Bill Johns. Hello, Bill Johns. You are a featured performer, actor with Christmas Rebels. You are the people that make me smile. <laughs> thank you, Amanda, as, <laughs> as are you for me. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, and then rounding it out, this handsome man, brand new father, Benji Ben Hunter. Uh, you are a featured performer, but there's more to it. You are a fiddler, you are a singer, and you are a storyteller with Christmas Rebels. Ben, welcome to City Line. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. It's just so great to have all three of you. And especially, this is, I mean, we have just gotten into December. So now your timelines and your show flows are becoming your nightmare. So on that, I say thank you for spending 13 minutes with me because time is money when you're ticking down to um, December 18th, 19th, and 21st. So BJ, tell us about this year's Quebecois Christmas Rebels. Well, this is a remount of a show we did in 2006. Um, it's absolutely delightful. It's very folk heavy because the music is absolutely irresistible from mm -hmm. that part of the world. Fiddles and, and accordion and uh, very uh, danceable. The story of this year is based on an, a very well-known old Quebecois uh, folk tale of trappers who managed to take a ride in the devil's canoe. <laughs> and uh, in, in turn, of course, they bargain with their souls. And uh, fortunately, it all works out. <laughs> Based upon reality, wasn't it, BJ? Absolutely. <laughs> BJ, what are a couple of things you think will particularly delight the audience? Because Christmas Rebels has something for every age group. Nobody ever walks out of there and feels like they had to suffer through a kid's musical. No. <laughs> no, I think... Um... Well, the storyline, uh, certainly the music and the dancing. Uh, the story is also based around Quebecois clogging, which is a very specific Ooh. style of, of, of sometimes just rhythm keeping when the band plays, uh, there is clogging involved. So all of that and the costumes, of course, are just extraordinary this year. I mean, the visually, I think it will delight everyone as well as orally. Yeah. There we go. It's stay magnifique. It's, it's yeah. Good. So, <laughs> Bill, let's chat for a second. You've been featured. I've seen you in several Christmas Revel productions. What inspires you to continually be a part of this program? Amanda, it's, it's different every year. It's just such an ex... I mean, the people to begin with. I mean, the, this is an incredible cast of characters. Everybody from the costumer to the musicians to BJ is such a joy to work with. The scripts are always such fun. Megan and her music and the unbelievable sound that this ensemble can put together from drunken beer tavern singing to the most beautific, um, you know, just, just amazing angelic sounds and and all in the same show um and every year it's entirely different the character is entirely different bj does such a lovely job often writing the stories herself um, oh. it's always a challenge always fun as an actor you just never know where you're going to be i mean uh, the last time i was in it i was uh in in serbia and then before that i was in 17th century spain and before that i was 1930s appalachia and this year in the 18th 
1800s in Quebec is, it's just such fun. And, and the accents and the challenges as an actor is just, just such fun. You know, the look on your face, if I could bottle that look and that <laughs> energy and then have everybody drink it, everybody would do what they loved in this world <laughs> and the world would be a better place, I'm convinced. I mean, you are you are operating on overflow right now. The look on your face is so joyful. You inspire me, Mr. Bill. So one in particular, because, you know, you mentioned all these years you've been in, mm -hmm. and you are a world stage traveler. So what is something particular that you like about this year's show? I mean, it's French. Come on. It's gorgeous. How can, you, how can you go wrong, right? Yeah. How can you go wrong? Uh, like I said, the, the the odd thing, you had mentioned that you have uh, French-Canadian roots. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually born in, in Orléans in France. Uh, my my parents are military, and, and uh, I was born in France in somewhere in the Dark Ages. And... Um, and and it, it it is really really interesting because when I came to the U.S., um, I had such a thick Canadian, uh, such a thick French accent, that I was you know I was ridiculed as a child, and you know and I couldn't wait to get rid of that accent. And of course now trying to bring it back has just kind of been a really interesting process. And of course it's not strictly French. I mean if you spoke to a you know very strict French person, they would say that this, this is a, this is a very backward accent, but oh, what fun, what absolute fun. It's such a, a, a conglomerate, this, this accent of, of such wonderful sounds and such interesting and, and unique vocabulary. And it's just fun to have in your mouth. You know, no, it is, it is. And you've said something that that I saw our, our, our Ben over there was nodding and that's just the way it sounds. I mean, Growing up with French Canadian speaking grandparents that I had, I mean, the the way that their palate is formed speaking this language, um, we can never speak it as beautiful as they can because we just don't have the function. So Ben, for you, uh, you're new to the Rebels cast um, and you're probably looking around going, wow, this is quite the experience. So what has it been like for you so far being the new, the new kid on the block? Um, well, it, it's, it's actually been, when, when Bill was talking about it, I, I, I've only been to one rehearsal, uh, so far cause I, cause I am frantically all over the place. Um, but the experience was, was, was a revelry. I mean, I, I didn't. I didn't quite know what to experience, and um, you know, I'm a, I'm a folk musician. Uh, I've traveled around the world playing, you know, uh, American roots music. But uh, you know, I've I've spent a lot of time playing Quebecois music. I've spent time playing Cajun music. I've spent time um, even playing classical French music. Um, and and I think it was really cool to. Um, experience the magnanimity of it, the the depth of it, the the spectrum of it, um, and you know personally, I, I'm of I'm of I was raised as a classical violinist, um, and I and I um, and I kind of am an advocate for for folk arts, um, world folk arts, and I and I, what I really love about this show is that it quite clearly demonstrates the bridge of of the humanity of all of that yeah. you know I, I feel so often i feel so often people are so ready and willing and quick to put things into a discipline or into a genre or into a box and the world just doesn't work that way or at least the natural world doesn't um as much as as, as much as the human world tries to put things into its place um, the natural world is is very fluid and and very flowing, and I and I really just appreciated being in this room where, um, you know, you could you could juxtapose that and and underscore just uh, the the blend of mm -hmm. humanity that exists everywhere. I, I thought that was, I I think it's a really beautiful thing. So so Ben, um, what do you think will be your favorite parts of your role in the show as you start to step into more rehearsals and and really take on that persona? 
I, I, I can't, I can't, I, I mean, I just, I, I can't put it into a box. I, <laughs> you know, I, I really like the whole, I really like the whole thing. You know, I'm, I'm getting together with the, with the musicians on Thursday night and we're going to practice these songs and, and just probably just play around and drink a, drink a, a couple beers and, and, um, and, and get into the music and, you know, storytelling. Um, if, if you've ever been to a show, you know, I'll probably, I'll probably spend more time than the song that I am playing, talking, <laughs> telling a story about the song I'm about to play one way or the other. So, you know, I, I think, I think it's really exciting to like, and I think the audience appreciates generally um, being able to not just hear the song, but get a little bit of insight or a story or something that, that gives context and, and um, dy dynamism to the, the thing that they're about to experience so that when they do hear the song or they do uh, see the dance or they, whatever, they, they feel a little bit more connected to yes. the, the thing. And so, Absolutely. you know, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to black out uh, <laughs> right before the show. I'm going to perform and then I'm going to black back in. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know what's going to happen. You're gonna Sorry, be, DJ. That's gonna just what's going to happen. <laughs> You're going to be in the zone, as we say. You know, it's like, just don't ask me what happened. I don't know where I went, but it was wonderful. It was great. Speaking of being in the zone and connecting, BJ, uh, since you're performing live on stage this year, what COVID precautions are you taking and what should our audience members know about? Well, first, in order to be a member of the audience, you must be vaccinated. We must, we are going to check for proof of that. You must also be masked. Um, on stage, we will not be masked, but we are um, not selling the first two rows of the theater to maintain a, a good distance. Um, and all of the cast members are vaccinated, including by the time we perform, the children, now that that has been approved. So uh, we're feeling quite comfortable uh, and we are rehearsing masks. Mm -hmm. Up until the performance, we will be, and off stage, we will be masked, so. Excellent, and we have been showing the website below each of your beautiful faces that people can go to to get tickets and also to read about COVID protocols and precautions. Last question, Bill Johns. Yes, ma'am. What, what makes you come back every single year? Oh my gosh. It is, I think one of the, one of the, um, one of the exciting things about doing theater is it is a very, very um, transitional um, temporal art form. You know, you make a piece of sculpture, it lasts, you know, as long as stone lasts. You make a piece of theater, it's over the second you, you know, the applause ends. And and to me, that's exciting because it's always alive and it's always fresh and it's always changing. And even from night to night, it changes. Um, there are times when I've done a show, uh, I worked in Atlanta um, doing a Christmas carol. And uh, we had 140 shows, 140 performances oh. of the thing, you know, often three times a day. And it was just, you, you had no idea what time of day it was. You had no, you know, and at some point it becomes work and wrote and you just battle against that. And, and it, it's the hardest thing. It's, it's really, a, you know, against what, what I love to do art about. It's about making this thing and being alive in the moment. And year after year, the revels changes. Yes. Year after year, it's entirely different. What's called, what I'm called to do as a storyteller or as a, you know, as a support character or whatever it is, it's entirely different. Uh, yes. character, the, the person that I designed, the through line, the arc of the story, all is entirely different. And then I get to work in that beautiful Rialto. Oh, you know, yes. amazing, you know, and I, I step on that stage and I go, wow, wow. <laughs> who has been here? Who has been here before me? You who can 
feel it. This spot, you can. There's a great line. There's a beautiful poem in Mummers that that is traditional and happens in every one about hearing the echoes of the people who have come before you to keep mm. keep to drive the dark away and to keep the year alive. There's there's these centuries of echoes behind you. These people behind you that have all tried to light candles, to sing, to dance, to drive away the dark. And you walk into that theater and you feel them. And the cool thing is so, so much of that audience, because they've come back year after year. Yes. They are part of that echo. Exactly. Just yeah. oh. Bill, Bill, I just, I, I wish I could talk with all three of you forever, but I, I've run out of time. Um, but I do want to say thank you to all three of you, Ben, because you're new, because you're bringing great ideas, you're bringing a breath of fresh air, um, you're bringing magic of a father's brand new eyes to that story. So thank you for that. BJ, your writing and your leadership is second to none. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Every year, the art of making art to quote the late Sir Sondheim, is um, hard to do consistently. And the Rebels has figured it out. And Bill, you and the rest of the repeat offenders that I see every year on that stage, because they're my family too, I say thank you. So let's, let's recap. December 18th, 19th, and 21st, we have a website where you can get tickets. And thank you, all three of you, so very much. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> we have much more to come on City Line. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this quick break.